Thank you. Uh, each of the community boards has, uh, has 20 minutes, and uh, how you choose to use that is entirely over to you. But I, I would uh, advise you um, to leave a little bit of time uh, so that councillors can explore with you some of the issues that you want to raise. Uh, all of your submissions have been read by councillors, and uh, so it's really important that when you come to the table that you really touch on the, the issues that are important to your um, community. So could I invite um, Sam McDonald and... Um, I don't know the others. I don't know if you're bringing your deputy up to the table as well, Aaron Campbell. Um, if you come to the table uh, and uh, welcome in your new role as the chair of Fendleton Waimati Hewitt Community Board. Uh, look, before I begin, can I just acknowledge David Cartwright for his work on the submission, his name's on the document, uh, and he led the team that put together what I think is quite an articulate and well thought out uh, submission to you today. Can I also acknowledge Aaron as our Deputy Chair, uh, he's also spent a lot of time working on this. But what we thought we'd do today is provide, before we go into the detail of the projects, a bit of a context about our wards. And it's always important, I think, to remind you of the demographics we have over in our part of town, and I think that really plays a role in, in the projects we're advocating for. So I'll do that, uh, talk about how we engaged, and then at a high level talk about some of the uh, projects we're looking at, and then Aaron is, is very keen to talk more about some of the projects, and as uh, Leanne said, we'll certainly leave time for questions. It's a uh, Fenelton Waimari Hewitt tradition that we're concise and to the point, so we'll leave plenty of time for you to, uh, to come back to us. So if we just start with those community board uh, demographics, I think it's really important to note uh, the ageing population, uh, particularly in our Fendleton area and sort of those larger homes. I also like to point out to any community group, and indeed you guys today, uh, that we have a large number of Housing New Zealand properties in our ward. Uh, ironically, they're actually in, predominantly in the Fendleton ward, uh, in the back of Brindwa. Uh, and then I guess the other side of that is our deprivation index. So we have a really broad spectrum, uh, ranging from a one in the Homewood area right through to a nine in Jelly Park. So I guess what we're trying to do is just paint a picture that uh, you know, there's a really diverse population in our area who will contribute uh, to, to our community. What I wanted to do is just take you through, just really quickly, uh, our wards. So if we look at Fendleton first, uh, the median personal income you'll see up there is 35700 The average house price is 855000 and that annual rates contribution is $41 million. Uh, I was looking through the LTP last night, actually, and based on that average house price, uh, the rate increase would be 5.72% based on that at the moment. If we look at my ward, the Waimari ward, uh, the median personal income is in line generally with the city at 29,400. Uh, the average price, house price is 608,000, and our annual rates contribution to the city coffers is nearly 27.5 million. Uh, based on that, we would get a 5.6% uh, rate increase based on the current LTP. Uh, and then the, the Herewood Ward, Aaron Kewen's Ward, we've got a median personal income of 32,000, an average house price of nearly 730. Uh, and their annual rates contribution is nearly $33 million. Uh, based on that, we would get a 5.67% rate increase uh, on that average price. I think this is quite an interesting graph, if you've, if you've got a chance to have a look up at the screen. And it breaks down uh, the proposed capital expenditure uh, versus the rate take in those wards. And obviously that's just capital, that's not OPEX. Um, but I think it really signifies that uh, you know, we practice what we preach. Uh, we, we don't ask for a lot, uh, but we do contribute significantly to the city. Uh, obviously, you'll see um, Linwood, Central and Heathcote is substantially higher, and I think that's, you know, everyone will understand that's predominantly due to the uh, Central City rebuild. But look, I think if there's one thing to take away from this, that's certainly a really good stat for the day, uh, for indeed the rest of the presentations. I thought I'd just touch on briefly how we engaged, and I'm sure that as you've all been working through your LTP, uh, engagement, you'll realise that it's a lot easier to go to the people than have the people come to you. Uh, we found that the culture galore was a really effective way, uh, where we had over 15,000 people come through in a couple of hours. Uh, and indeed, you'll see the picture up here with Raf uh, and the two errands outside Bishopdale Mall. And I think it's really important, and, and we certainly made it a priority, to be seen in our communities uh, wanting to genuinely take their views uh, on board. So I think, you know, before I hand over to Aaron, I just wanted to touch on a couple of the key concerns from our engagement. Uh, the first one, uh, and again, don't shoot the messenger, we're passing on the feedback from our communities, was the concern, spent, uh, concern over the money spent on cycleways. 
Uh, you know, from my point of view, there's been three things that have come out of uh, this process. Uh, you know, the rate increase uh, we consider is a, a quite high. Uh, the cycleways obviously is a concern that people are, are raising with us, and I think the water chlorination, which um, you know is obviously an issue you're all working through at the moment. So if we look, uh, and I will pass over to Aaron to go on these and go into these in detail, but just at a really broad level, uh, we want to focus on the regeneration of Bishopdale. Uh, we want to look at, um, you know, we're, we're obviously in full support of traffic lights at the Breens and Harewood and Gardeners Road intersection. Uh, we really want an emphasis on road maintenance and core infrastructure, uh, and we'd like to see some toilet facilities at the lake, uh, along with a deferment of the wheels to wind cycleways. Uh, and then obviously, as I pointed out at the beginning, uh, with the rate increases across our wards based on the average house price, we're really keen to see that rate increase driven down because it does disproportionately affect uh, you know, properties within our area. So look, I'll pass over to Aaron to go into a wee bit more detail, then we'll conclude and then happy to take questions. Uh, the, on that slide, there's probably uh, two... Um, uh, just go back, this place, thank you. Uh, there's uh, two things I'd just like to highlight there. Um, one is the, uh, the Lake Roto and Lake Kohatu um, area there. Um, it used to be the site of the former Waimari Council um, landfill. Um, it's a fantastic, uh, uh, two, well, there's, there's two lakes there, they're both fantastic recreation lakes, uh, one predominantly for the jet ski uh, in Canterbury uh, group, as well as the other lake has a huge variety of uh, recreational uses from dragon boaters, learn to sail, um, the list just goes on. In summer it is um, open for public to access, um, in summer, this past summer it's had a tremendous amount of um, um, demand brought on by public accessing it wanting to swim there. Um, there are, there was five portable toilets, um, the uh, three were supplied, um, paid for by the recreation groups, two were supplied by council. Uh, when you have two, three, four thousand people there in a day, um, those quickly become overwhelmed. Um, there's issues around um, just the management of that space, which I know that uh, staff are working on, which we certainly appreciate. Um, Twelve months ago, the the um, the I'm just looking for the words here. Um, the issues that were at the lake were slightly different. Uh, they were regarding kind of security and that kind of thing. Uh, now it's just the the amount of use that it gets is is tremendous. So um, in the LTP there are two toilet facilities um, on budget, one's in the north, one's to the south, um, of about 300,000 per uh, unit. Um, we would like to request that one of those facilities be brought forward in the LTP um, so that uh, that's installed um, you know, a little bit sooner than what's currently there. Um, and then that would go on to the regeneration of Bishopdale, uh, particularly the Bishopdale Mall, um, there is a currently um, a plunket room site there that is earthquake damaged. Um, it's beyond um, you know, cost effective repair, um, as well as the use of this um, of that uh, facility. Um, it's just not really suitable for much. So um, the proposal there is um, to use the money in the LTP from um, deferring one of the toilet facilities at uh, one of the lakes there um, and bringing that into um, the Bishopdale Mall. So it would be a public facility, public toilet facility that's available 24 hours a day. As you'll know, the Bishopdale uh, Mall Library and Community Centre, um, Oral Pata, um, has just been built. Um, the toilet facility there is only um, open, you know, during, you know, effectively library opening hours and things like that. Um, so that's uh, probably the, the one, um, or one of our major uh, drivers for this. Fantastic. So look, just in conclusion, if I go right through to it, sorry, I'm not the best PowerPoint mover, so you've probably missed a couple of these as we've gone through. But look, just to conclude, uh, and I think our, our submission genuinely articulates uh, the views of North West Christchurch. You know, we're, in, we're strong advocates for minimal rate increases, a real focus on core infrastructure and services. Uh, we'd like to see the annual general charge inflation proofed. Um, that hasn't moved in a couple of years, so we'd, we'd like to see that. We generally aren't supportive of, the reg or of our regional fuel tax. Uh, and we'd like to commend, I think, uh, Leanne, Carleen and, and you all for your continual drive for efficiency within the council. I think that is showing real dividends. The last point there is just greater delegations to boards, and we'd continue to encourage uh, that. I know uh, Leanne's very strong on it, and we'd genuinely like to see more uh, being done at a board level. So, look, thank you very much for your time, and I hope you can take on board some of the points from our presentation. I'm uh, happy to take any questions with any of the time we've got remaining.
Great, plenty of time. Um, uh, Mike, Jimmy, Phil, Glenn, Vicky, Yanni. What have I done wrong? <laughs> I don't know, but I suspect cycleways might have something to do with <laughs> it. I've just got a couple of questions on the cycleways. So you're obviously requesting for us to defer it. And then the, the long-term plan, the proposed one, is already deferred. You want it deferred even further out. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so part of your um, report here talks about the fact that you want the money spent on intersections, uh, Harewood Road, a couple of intersections on Harewood Road, where actually, if you did the cycleway, those intersections would be upgraded. Um, and so you realise, obviously, with the cycleways, <laughs> that the funding is two for one. And, but if it was just a roading project, it would actually be one for one if NZTA agreed to it. Mm. And right. so that doesn't concern you that would actually lose funding. So, Well, I, my understanding was that there was a cap on that funding we get each year in terms of cycleways. So is there not? So. Well, for, for the wheels to win, so there is some caps on it, but with the wheels to win, it's obviously quite a well-used cycleway. So therefore it would most likely get the two-for-one funding, and we'll get staff to answer that question. Hmm. But we, that, we know... That might be worthwhile. Yeah, but yeah. we know for sure. So, so therefore, if that's the case, if, if the <coughs> wheels to wings, wings to wheels, yeah. was to get two-for-one funding, would therefore your board still want to defer it? Or would you actually want to bring it forward so we can actually get those intersections fixed at actually a better cost for the ratepayer? Well, I think... That the first point is that with the traffic lights uh, at Herewood Brains, which we get a lot of feedback on locally, I mean, look, if, if that was the case, and if we were putting that in and they were coming as part of that, that may be something we'd consider. I think that the, the general point in the, from the engagement we've had was that, you know, when we've got so many financial pressures as a city, uh, we were looking and being pragmatic in our community as an area where we could save the city money. Uh, whether that be deferring it for some time. So we're not saying we're opposed to it entirely. Yeah. We just think that at the moment, you know, if you talk to general, uh, if you're talking to the public in our communities, it's the fact they can't drive on our roads properly and that they're, they're facing uh, some severe rating pressure. Yeah. So, look, I it mean, is, we'll it, probably always disagree on that. Well, it's interesting but, but, because obviously yeah. the, the cycleway goes through through my ward as well. And That's actually, right. I'm hearing the difference thing from my community. They're actually very concerned that these um, cycleways have been deferred because they're actually a really good thing for not just people trying to get to work on a bike, but also a lot of lot of kids. So I'm hearing an opposite thing yeah. from, from my oh, community. Yeah. Um, but, but when you look at the actual funding mechanism and, and trying to actually make the, the ratepayers' dollar go even further, the cycleways actually potentially does that because we get a lot of side benefits from just doing the cycleways, which would be the intersection improvements that your community board are actually calling for. Um, so, to me, if we're looking for actually trying to improve these intersections, which I actually I agree with we need to do, mm. then potentially trying to defer the cycleway is not the best way to do it. Actually bringing it forward would be because actually we're going to help the rate payer out in many ways by the fact that we're getting more funding from both NZTA and Central yeah, Government. Yeah, well, I mean, look, I'll, I'll, I kind of don't want to, I don't want to interrupt this wonderful yeah, speech. Just, um, you're, but, you're, uh, you're entitled to the, give and we, we, we may just we, have to Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. I, I think um, the, the um, one aspect to that is depending on where the wheels to wings cycleway actually goes and which intersections it actually goes through. Some, there's probably two or three different routes that it's currently being kind of uh, looked at and um, at least a couple of those it doesn't go through specifically the Herewood Greer's um, intersection. Um, the amended LTP a couple of years ago had um, I think 1.8 1 or 2.4 million dollars for an intersection upgrade because it's one of the um, most um, dangerous high risk uh, intersections along the Herewood Road corridor. Um, so from a safety of all road users uh, point of view um, the reprioritisation of spending money towards um, improving the safety, particularly at that one now that it, that's also been now deferred from the current LTP, um, yeah, that's of concern um, for for me for, for as, as a board, um, and um, that's one of the reasons why we're saying um, look at deferring it. I, uh, we don't think that the money that the government is subsidising will disappear. Uh, the national government obviously started the. Um, the subsidisation process of cycleways. Um, the current government, um, I can't imagine it um, removing. If not, it will increase. So yeah, if that if the current government wants to come to the table with even more subsidy, um, yeah, hey, let's let's discuss it then. But under the current 
um, budget constraints that the council is in right now. Um, obviously, it's developing day by day. Um, the, the water chlorination issue, the wellheads issue, um, is um, is um, growing, dare I say, day by day. Um, this is this is one aspect that we can say, let's push this back out for now. Jimmy. Thank you. One question. And because your board particular you know, recommend uh, the rates you know, uh, to increase the five percentage rather than a five point five percentage. But if we review if a one percentage probably four hundred and a uh, four and a half million dollars, so half, so point five probably two and a two five million dollars. But here you particular emphasize you still have some of the project or items need to be taken at the high priority. Particularly you mentioned the, like the regeneration bishop there more and the four intersection of the you know the, the your, your roading etc. But you propose it's only the wins to wheels cycleway project be deferred to spend those the budget to support those the uh, four intersection the, the the routing area, but I'm just question is uh, probably the budget still not sufficient. So do you think what kind of project either in your board or citywide probably can be the deferred? Yes, I think that, I mean look, you make an interesting point. The reality is we didn't come here today with a list of things we we want uh, and things that we we can't uh, that we won't have that we can't fund. So what we're saying by the deferment of the wheels to wings is that actually substantially we contribute a lot more back to the city than those local projects we actually want and the community want. So yeah, we're not coming in saying, you know, here's 23 million back or whatever it is. Uh, we want 23 million more in our community. We're saying, actually, here's 23 million back. We want about five. So we kind of think we're being responsible in that respect and sort of demonstrating that we're not wanting to take, take, take. We're giving back as well, which hopefully reduces that burden on our ratepayers. So as a board, we did discuss levels of service around um, um, very local and specific projects. Um, I could rattle off a couple now if you'd like. Sure. Um, on Creek Road, there's a, um, a Cheers installation artwork um, in 2027-2028. It's up for renewal. Um, it's $85,000 uh, for that. Um, there is a um, there's Westburn Reserve Learn to Ride track. Um, I've, I've eyeballed it myself. Um, it's a fantastic um, uh, learn to ride facility for you know ch for children to you know learn how to ride with you know road markings and stop signs and all this kind of thing. Um, again, it's up for renewal, uh, two hundred twenty thousand um, dollars. It's in really really good nick. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes to um, levels of service and renewals, um, having a, a, a smarter um, way of implementing and you know doing some of these things um, is, is something that you know we're certainly um, we've certainly discussed at a border level and we'd love to. Um, be able to bring these things and kind of highlight them um, to council. Absolutely. Um, you, you'll, you. note, you'll note from the um, discussion that we had with the external advisory group last week that we want to review uh, levels of service for precisely that reason. So thank you thank for you. those examples. Phil. So, um, Aaron, Sam, you'll be, you'll be aware that two, two of our strategic priorities, one is active travel and the other one is safe communities. So like if we take your, I'm re referring to wheels to wings, if we take your part of the city, the air, you'll be aware the airport is one of the biggest employers in the city, Absolutely. a large number of, of people um, commuting to the airport in, from your area. So if, if you, you're saying don't do the wheels to wings, but how can you actually, in doing that, how can you actually ensure the safety uh, for people who want to commute to work to the airport uh, by bike as compared with those in cars? I'm probably looking at the catchment area for the wheels to wings. Um, you know, there's two access roads to the airport, you know, one up Memorial. Um, that's obviously just been improved. It was, well, it still currently is, you know, the most dangerous intersection in Christchurch, but that's, you know, um, Memorial and Johns Road. But now with the new, absolutely. So, you know, that statistic's probably going to, you know, drop. Um, significantly, so there's there's two um, access points there now that Wairaki Road's been closed off, and that's up Hewood Road and underneath the underpass, and then the second one's through Memorial. If you're looking at the catchment uh, for the people to use that underpass, um, and then also the distance that people will will cycle, um, the numbers that um, our uh, our cycling uh, team, our major cycleways staff team have uh, brought to us saying that a thousand people a day are going to cycle 
uh, from Crofton Road um, north, uh, sorry, uh, west um, to the airport. Um, right now, I, d I don't see it. I don't see it. Um, I've also talked to um, schools in the area um, asking about kind of active transport for children and whether or not a uh, major cycleway would likely lead to an increase of, in children biking to school and their impression is that it wouldn't lead to a dramatic increase. I really would like to know whether other people that have questions are going to focus on the on the one cycleway or have we got other issues? Yep, I, I was You've got another issue, on, yeah, Glenn. On social housing, my question. So at the beginning you pointed out uh, the Housing New Zealand and Council units in your ward. You talked about the ageing population. Given that baby boomer bubble is coming through, we'll need obviously to provide for social housing. Whoever delivers it will get in a big pickle. Have you got any ideas over uh, it, where extra funding would come from for more council units yourself? Yes, so our submission wasn't advocating for more social housing. I think that the point was at the beginning we were just explaining that there is a demographic within our society that is supported uh, by the council and the government. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well. The, so the question is around council supplying more units? Um, my, well, the, we didn't actively discuss this at a board level, um, but if you were to ask my opinion, um, I would look at upgrading current council units to make them more livable. So you're looking at upgrading insulation um, to make making them a better living um, environment for the current tenants, rather than expanding the program right now um, and waiting to see what the government will bring along um, from its uh, program and rolling out the housing for social. I, I am actually going to give you another two minutes because I should have pulled up another councillor before. So, um, Vicky, um, Yani, Aaron, if it's within the two minutes. So Very brief questions. Um, one, the toilets, can they be done within the existing budget by reprioritising? I believe so, yes. Excellent. And the second one, the fuel tax is interesting given that you want to keep rates down. So if, for example, there was a four cents per litre fuel tax, that would reduce rates by about... Uh, 3%, so you're still not looking to um, have any other sources of income apart from the home asset that people own? A fuel tax is, a, is, is regressive. It's going to hit uh, low income families hardest, which would be similar to increasing GST. Or it's going to hit those who travel most. Yeah, and low income families will have um, vehicles that will be less fuel efficient. Um, and they may even need um, several vehicles because the public transportation system isn't efficient enough um, that they might need, they could uh, well have um, three vehicles within so, a family so you'd to rather be able to travel to disperse So you'd rather the all the costs went on to their house? Sorry, the? You'd rather all the costs went on to rates than spreading any of the... I think it's around reprioritisation of, of capital. So um, as Leanne brought up, the EAG um, report there last week um, that certainly summarised what the board was um, thinking and discussing. Um, basically, we believe the money is there within budget. It just needs to be spent better, particularly around procurement. Yanni? Uh, thank you. Um, just a very um, short question in terms of the Groins Roto Kahutu Master Plan. Is your board driving that, and do you have a time frame for that being complete? Uh, we're <laughs> yeah, we, I don't have a time frame today, but we are, we are driving it, yeah. Okay, it, um, I'm just really keen to pick up the issue of the toilets, and I'm not quite sure, my understanding is we have to wait for that plan before we can make a decision on the toilets? Yeah, well, when I say driving, I think staff are obviously doing the work, and they're gonna come back to us once they've, they've done that, um, but we'd like to see this done in the interim, wouldn't we? Yeah, the biggest issue there, I think, is around the transfer of um, 30 hectares of land left over or surplus to the ex extension of the or, or the building of the Western Belfast bypass. Mm -hmm. um, there's issues around surveying that land and bringing it into the, the larger groins um, regional park. So I'm just trying to think what resolution that we can pass that would help you get the toilets. Uh, well, we can we can deal with that separately. We're, we're dealing with the hearings today. We'll be uh, working back again through the uh, community board chairs prior to making any resolutions. So don't worry, you, you, you will, it won't be lost. And Aaron, I'm sorry, but you're going to be able to have your discussion 
directly with your own community board. So um, thank you guys very much for presenting to us today yeah. and uh, we will... We, <laughs> well, that's not helpful, actually, really. Oh, it's just, Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, could I...